Yeah, so don't directly quote me on that. I'm not so sure. But if I had to pick another one, it's probably Hardcore History with Mick Foley. Because what the fuck was the point of that? They say the base of this feud. That's why I, don't, I hate this feud so much. I'm like, okay, Mick Foley's snapping. Great. Now, why again? Oh, because Hardcore History reminded him of his old ways. Was it Hardcore History only like three episodes? Oh, yeah. <sighs> what? What? What a fucking pointless segment. Three episodes. Three episodes reminds him of his old hardcore ways. I don't buy that for shit. He also asked another question. Uh, what do you think is John Cena's best match? I think it's WrestleMania 23. I have been asked this before several times, actually. Uh, as you guys know, I usually like the matches that no one remembers. And here's some of my favorite John Cena matches. Three or four? Yeah, four. Stick out of my mind. I liked uh, John Cena versus Kurt Angle at No Mercy. That is one of the most underrated matches in history. No one fucking remembers that match. That match was great. In fact, let me go over here to the uh, Wrestling Observer star ratings that I did put in my, in my channel. Okay. I guarantee it was higher than three stars. I think it was actually more than that. John Cena vs. Kurt Angle. A four and a quarter star match. A four and a quarter star fucking match. No one remembers it. Which is a damn shame. A shame. A shame. That match was absolutely fantastic. Another match that I liked. John Cena vs. Chris Benoit. I believe this was a few weeks after Armageddon. They had the Battle Royal. John Cena and Chris Benoit got eliminated simultaneously. How many times have I seen that? And they fought each other to see who would fight Brock Lesnar. They had a good 20-minute match. Chris Benoit was good for John Cena. Very, very good match. The other matches is I Quit Match with JBL. Oh, it's TLC with Edge. One Night Stand with RVD. Those are just good matches. But one of my all-time favorites is him versus The Undertaker from Vengeance of 2003. I know it's not really that great of a match. It just sticks out in my mind because John Cena back then was, like, unstoppable. I mean, you know what I mean. As a gangster, like... He was one of those heels that just got elevated to a higher status and hadn't really lost yet. And The Undertaker was the first guy that I think to pin him cleanly ever since he got his new attitude. Like, after his thing with Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, was, the, I believe, was the first guy to ever pin him cleanly. And I liked that match. It was long. It was cool. I liked John Cena used the chain, the FU. I, didn't, I honestly didn't think he could FU The Undertaker. And that just, that's just... It's a good memory. Is it his best technical match? No. Maybe that's probably No Mercy against Kurt Angle. Of 2003, but that match leaves a great memory in my mind. Okay, next question. Uh, Teddy Boy Smith 2 says, Do you think Sonny, aka Tammy Lynch Sitch, is worth of a full time return to WWE, not as a wrestler, but a valley manager? I think she could have something to offer. I do too, but uh, I don't think her and the WWE are on good terms. I mean, I know she showed up to the she did show up to the WrestleMania Battle Royale, but I know a lot of people who would show up for a one time deal. Didn't they? I know Sable sued the company. I'm pretty sure she did for sexual harassment. Didn't Sonny like has has something against Vince McMahon? But if they are on good terms, if she, cause trust me, trust me, a lot of wrestlers will come back for one day to get a to get a paycheck, especially in a battle royale where you barely do any work. But if she isn't good terms, yeah, she could have a lot to offer, and I could see her coming back. Do you think Natalia will be the Divas Champion, Women Champion in the new future? I think she's awesome. Would like to see her as champ and possibly join Legacy. Would you? I can see all those things happening, and all those things probably will happen. WWE does have a brain. I never thought uh, they'd give uh, Victoria the title in her feud with Trish Stratus, because Trish Stratus was so over with the crowd. I never thought they'd give Victoria the title. And when you think of Women's Champion, you think of Trish Stratus. And sure enough, they gave her the title, and she had a good five or six month reign. Something around, yeah, it was six months. Five or six months around there, from November to WrestleMania. So five months. A very, very, very good reign. And so they will give the belt to Natalia. Especially as if you're a manager, you have a better chance, in my opinion, than a regular singles wrestler because you can just get into a feud with someone and that someone can win the world title. I like Edge Lita. I like Triple H Stephanie. And then she can have the women's title, you know, to, to balance her out or something. Do you think Matt Strike will ever make it to Raw Strike's color commentator? Um, yes, I hope he doesn't get drafted because. If he gets drafted and he switches with Michael Cole, yes. First of all, Matt Stryker and Jim Ross won't work. 
You guys think it will? No, no. Matt Stryker plays off Michael. Um, not Michael Cole. Yeah, either Michael Cole or Matt or Todd Grisham. They're about the same person. Matt Stryker plays off Todd Grisham. I'd rather even have Todd Grisham than Michael Cole because Michael Cole is the better of two evils. And Todd Grisham just doesn't know much about the wrestling business. I remember I told you guys that quote, which is one of the worst quotes a commentator could say. He said, how does Tyson kid feel looking at Evan Bourne all the way up there in the shooting star press? And then Todd, Matt, you don't say that. And then Matt Stryker had to like correct him. Yeah, but he obviously didn't because if he was aware enough, he would have rolled out of the way. And I'm like, Todd, why would you do that? I like Josh Matthews better than Todd. So honestly, I hope Todd Grisham goes back to ECW. Or I just don't think maybe, hopefully, Matt Stryker can play off Josh Matthews as a nerd like he did with uh, with Todd with Todd Grisham. That's why Matt Stryker and Todd Grisham was so great last year. Or how like uh, JBL was with Michael Cole. Those are usually my favorite ones. Uh, you kind of have a moderate heel commentator and a, a face commentator, and the heel always picks on the face. To me, that's the best one. JR the King, it did it, it wasn't that style, but it obviously was one of the greatest commentating teams of all time. So I really hope he doesn't go to Raw or SmackDown. But I guess if I had to begin, Michael Cole and Matt Stryker could work. So it could Todd Grisham, I guess. Just don't like fix it up. I hope he doesn't go, but sadly he might. Uh, do you think Randy Orton should have walked away with the title of Mania? Uh, yes, I do. Actually, yeah, I do. Because if Triple H... I've said this before. I've said this so many times when I talk about the this Matt Morgan feud and about this feud. If Triple H wins, the feud is over, in my opinion. Because you already know that... Because Triple H already beats Randy Orton. He's done. Why does Randy Orton get another title shot? As opposed to... If Randy Orton had won, you know, Triple H could fight for the title. They could switch the titles even back and forth for a good six months. But once you have the champion win, it's kind of like... Okay, he won. Bye-bye to you. Why does he get another title shot? It was a really fucking stupid way. And that was another question from Steve. I'll go to his questions now, I guess. Steve1386 says... I don't remember the question exactly because he posted it as a comment on my video, but I remember the question. Um, do you think Triple H should have walked with the title? Oh, are you not upset that Triple H didn't turn, that Triple H didn't turn heel at Mania? I'm not upset because I didn't really want him to turn heel. Triple H said himself he loves playing heel, but I think that he would do better, uh, not as a heel champ, yeah, I prefer him as a heel champion than a, uh, than a, than a, than a heel competitor, because a heel competitor is like kind of bland, at least a heel champion, he has power, but I was hoping that night that Randy Orton would win the title. And I was hoping that Randy Orton would win the title, so I was hoping for that. I didn't really hope that Triple H would turn heel. It just wouldn't make sense. And uh, what did you think of the Triple Threat match or something like that? I thought it was good. Do I think... No, I think... I thought... I think that uh, Edge should have won just because I hate Edge having another one-month title reign. I didn't mention that in my last video because I was running on time. But Edge really should have... I'm tired of Edge having another fucking one-month title reign. It's just horrible for his credibility. I really did. I really was rooting for Edge in that match, but it didn't happen. It's not a big deal. Matt Beast fourteen nineteen says, "What are your top superstars, past or present?" Okay, number one, easy. Number two, HBK. Number three, The Rock. I was a big fan of The Rock. Number four, uh, Stone Cold, and number five, Kurt Angle. No, Triple H is not my top five. I just. He's good. I just get slightly like his thing isn't his uh his uh his uh his uh dude, what the fuck am I saying? His uh his move set is not that like I'm like yeah it's all right but like it's, it's nothing good. I've always thought that about Triple H, so I was never really excited to see him wrestle. I mean, he's good, I guess, but I don't think he's as great as everyone says. What was the worst spot you ever saw? Easily. I'm going to do this in my random DVD review as soon as I'm done with the RVD DVD, which I have on Netflix. I saw this yesterday. In here might be the best, worst spot you ever saw. Triple H going for the pedigree on Kurt Angle. He goes for it basically like this, and when he lifts him up, the table just breaks. I'm like, what? He lifts him up. He didn't even slam the table breaks. So when he slams Kurt Angle, they go down, down, bam, right in the concrete. And it was a really cool spot. I feel bad for Kurt Angle, though. It was such a horrible botch. Also, the Shockmaster incident. That was a pretty bad botch. Those would be my worst. Blue CMU says, 
Uh, do you think the WWE should get rid of music performance at WrestleMania unless the artist is relevant? I don't see the point of having to take a valuable time that can be devoted to a wrestling match. Kind of. I definitely agree with you. No more fucking Kid Rocket Mania. You wasted 20 minutes of our time when you could have had a, what I heard was a pretty damn good tag team match. Fuck Kid Rock. Don't ever do that to WrestleMania again. What you can do is have someone play instrumental singing the national anthem like John Legend did. Or, and this is my preferred option, like in 2002 and 2006, you have a band perform as long as it leads to playing a guy's theme song. Not what they did at WrestleMania with the Divas. No, no, no. I'm talking about Undertaker in 2003 when Limp Bizkit performed his theme song. Triple H in WrestleMania 18 and I'm pretty sure WrestleMania 22 when Saliva played his theme song. WrestleMania 22 when Rey Mysterio's band, P.O.D., they pod or whatever, they played his theme song. That's the only way you can have musical artists. Wiseo 2K7, what age are you? 15. Do you like John Cena? Yes. Ooh, part three coming up on Big Rat 3, 10.